representative here and also running the, the Japan gauntlet. If they want to win this tournament, they effectively have to beat one, two, three, four, five. Five Japanese players in six sets if they want to win the tournament. So that is the gauntlet if I ever saw one. If he does that, he's officially nuts. And he, he's officially nuts. He's got a favorite matchup here so far. I mean, we got to see uh, Chag actually overcome Earth just before this in 3-1 fashion. And now, a, a very respectable matchup for uh, Palutena. He has a lot of, like, really high knockback moves to put Ness in bad positions. But, uh, as I mentioned before, this stage is actually phenomenal for both characters. I, I love it for Ness, and I, I like it a lot for Palutena. So, definitely gotta be mindful of it. Like, if you're someone that's going up against your local Palutena or local Ness, consider maybe getting rid of the stage against those players specifically, because I think they both have a lot to work with here. Yeah, we're in. I'm in Tri-State, so you know, like for me, like we pick PS2 quite a lot, and I've seen it quite. I've seen it quite a lot to the point where people do start counterpicking against these two characters. And it's funny that you mentioned these two characters, like the way you talked about them before. Like on paper, Palutena should dominate this matchup, as the back air is going to two the stock right there. Only 11% on Chad. Good, uh, really good start for the uh, Mexican hero right now. But either way, like, in practice, it's a little bit different, you know? Ness has a pretty quick option. He has a pretty quick get-off-me nair. He's got a pretty quick, like, stringing forward air that could be good in neutral against Palutena if she's not facing away from you with the back air. And even if she is, you can time it right off of a parry. I feel like a big important thing is that the Ness has got to utilize real, proper bundies in a matchup like this. I want to see those back airs get parried. I want to see rising uh, PK fires off of the ledge to try to stuff out Palutena's recovery. I want to see good, solid bread and butter ledge traps waiting to see what Palutena picks. Because if the Ness doesn't have good decision making in a matchup like this, that's going to happen to him over and over and over again. You're just going to get back aired and be down two stocks to three. Or one stock to three. My mistake. You know what I'm trying to say. Lose two stocks to three. But either way, looking yeah. real, real rough right now. Yeah, yeah, you mentioned that on paper and in practice can be very different things. Right now, though, uh, the practice is seem to be paying off for Chag in the long run because I have seen Chag lose this before. Granted, it was against Send, who has one of the best power play players in the world in Louis Money as a practice partner. So he plays that matchup a lot. So for Chag to lose to Send, it's very a lot more understandable. Let's see what Gat can do to apply pressure in this matchup. All right. Yeah, we're just waiting for it that time around. I love the crouch. Right there, that was actually nuts. You saw like the two little empty hops that he did right there and then immediately crouched because he recognized that the forward air was coming. That was just matchup knowledge right there. Straight matchup knowledge. Like, I'm not just a Palutena who back airs because I can just back air and get away with it. This level against Gact, that doesn't work. I know the matchup, I know the way this character's double jump works. The rising double jump, literally crouching against it, rising forward air from the ledge. That was nuts. And as a result, he got a three stock. Only 100% stacked on top of Jack. That was a dominant way to start this set, Rickles. Yeah, essentially just tripling down on like the reverse right there. Just three sock, uh, very quick game relatively as well. It's just a really good pressure. And I, I mentioned before, this, the, the stage, I don't think it's a factor just because both of them excel on the stage. I think it was just a big thing that where Chag is comfortable. Chag is all the way dialed in probably feeling pretty hot after that earth win as well. Whereas uh, we have Gak coming out of a loss. So we'll see what Gak can do on this next game. And we'll see if it gets to the point where Gak will start like like uh, fishing for options if it starts to feel like hopeless because that game one was kind of devastating. It was, honestly. And on Kalos here, it's going to be interesting to see how like a character like Ness will be able to split the gap against Palutena. Because, you know, a good thing, a good thing I will say about this matchup is that, you know, for Ness, I mean, is that Palutena, of course, she's got like those long-range options in Auto Reticle and Explosive Flame, and when you're playing at a level like Chag, you can't just be throwing out those moves willy-nilly in certain matchups, and especially because like the character could just rush you down as a result if they see it coming, but another reason Palutena can't do that in this matchup, obviously, is that the character has PSI Magnet. I can literally just heal off of Auto Reticle. That's three strong projectiles that pop out of that move. Ness is going to heal a lot with PSI Magnet on deck, which is probably why you're not going to see Palutena utilize that move too often, unless she knows she might have the frame advantage or that the Ness might not be aware of the situation to the point where it's going to hit. But right now, seems like they're just swinging at each other, Rickles. That's a lot of whiffs that we're seeing. Yeah, plenty of whiffs so far. But so far, uh, Ch uh, actually, Gak, very close to just outdoing himself already in the first game, uh, pushing that, like, 100%, potentially uh, an opportunity to get the first stock advantage here. Did I blink, or did I just see a situation where the PSI Magnet was out, but Auto Reticle didn't heal it? Uh, sometimes there's weird interactions with it. I'm not sure it's dependent on like the spacing or positioning of it, but that's kind of crazy. I think what happened is that like I mean it was like right at the startup frames of PSI Magnet, so I don't think like the I don't think like the healing aura of it was out yet. That had to have been it, because I or, or maybe I just blinked and missed the scenario and he did heal, but I don't think that's what happened. Either way, very wonky interaction. 
We're probably going to see more of that later. Uh, more of that later on, or may have some more healing factor from the PSI magnet instead as the back throw. Not going to do it from center stage with that much rage. You know, one of the strongest back throws in the game to do it. I believe as far as it's either it's knockback growth or it's knockback. It's one or the other. He shares that with Incineroar. But the up smash from ledge. Ooh. Bread and butter nest. Going to do it. Really good chase right there, but the uh, Kalos counter pick is keeping Gag alive, which is very interesting as well because this is typically a uh, Chag counter pick a lot of the time. So maybe if Chag loses, they'll run it back or maybe try something different. But so far, Gag is doing a lot better here for uh, a, a lot of good reasons here. So really good stuff. I love that option from Chag right there. That was so smart. You can't use Explosive Flame willy-nilly against Ness for the reasons I mentioned, but he did it right there because he did it at the perfect positioning and the perfect timing, where Zagak was right by the ledge and had no choice but to grab it. He sort of just created a no-fly zone above him for a neutral getup, and so it forced him to wait as a result of that. And so he just waited for the Explosive Flame to go away, which just made him easy pickings for a dash attack. That was good, solid bread-and-butter conditioning on the part of Chag right there. Very smart play from the Mexican guy, from the Mexican hero. The Mexican rep, I should say. That's what I meant to say. You know, yeah, the world traveler right here. The, the only world one, traveler. Uh, the only non-Japanese player in this top six. Uh, so we'll see what they can do to just like uh, just plow right through the competition. Uh, not too far away from making this a, uh, a 2-0 advantage in the set. Uh, but Gak does not want that to happen at all. You don't want to get the winner top eight and then go out 0-2. No, you do not, my friend. No, you do not, especially against here. Like, I'm just saying, if, again, if Chag does this, he's nuts. He's going up against a gauntlet of some of Japan's finest, like you mentioned earlier. So, he's already up a whole game against, uh, he's already up a whole game against Gak right now. So, if he keeps playing in the way that he's doing, it might work. But Gak, utilizing much better proper decision making, not committing too hard, except for that up smash, just as I say that. Getting a lot of neutral airs into tech chase reads and whatnot. And now these guys are just swinging for the fences against each other. I feel like, you know, like, none of them Woo! as a back air is going to take the stock on the platform. Despite the very long stage, neither of them are playing very defensive at all. They are swinging at each other this set, Brickles. Yeah, really good opening here. And now we have an opportunity here for uh, Gak to just rag it up consistently. Oh, an explosive flame. I think might have set up for too large of a cooldown there. Uh, but either way, Gak going up a game, which is very interesting too, because like I've noticed a, a trend here in these higher percent scenarios is that uh, Ness is actually like a smoking gun a lot more than Palutena in those higher percents. It's just like uh, Ness can just throw out like a back air or a smash attack or an up air or just like a, a better get off me tool a lot of the time. Whereas like I think Palutena has to outface things and position things a little bit easier. Or like a little bit differently. So I think at high percent, Ness has the advantage. Yeah, for sure. Like, you know, it's it's a little bit of that like sort of like extra factor of like, oh, character's really good at like either zero to death in you or they're good at racking on damage for you. But when it's time to like, if you can't get the kill by just like a raw edge guard or like a smash attack or something like that out of a combo or a gimp and it's time for your character to just kill raw, it doesn't matter if Palutena's, you know, it doesn't matter if her shield is invincible during her attacks. It can still make her approaches a little bit linear. If Ness is expecting it, he can shield it or he can parry it or whatnot. He's not just going to be swinging for the fences. You don't get to be one of the best Nesses in the world if you're just constantly swinging through invincible hitboxes. You know what I mean? You got to, like, discipline yourself a little bit better. And Chag knows that Gak certainly is. Uh, we actually saw a good 30 seconds there where uh, Chag was just untouched, but now a couple big hits later. And it's just... Uh, you know, playing back and forth here. Uh, the stage counter pretty, pretty good for Palutena. I love those downers in close quarter situations. I saw uh, both Ch Chad gets a lot of those and Lee Money gets a lot of those. So Palutena, if you're in a close position, even if you got your back turned to them, downers are a really good way to cover both sides. It's such a good get off me move, as well as the fact that because of the way it puts you in the hit stun, at lower percents, you can actually ch uh, either tech chase with it or even sometimes combo with it as well. Like, I've done downer to downer with this character before and oh! Be damned if there ain't a more satisfying combo to be able to hit in this game than getting that move twice. Because it, more importantly, down air also weak, uh, down air because of the way that grounded, uh, tech spikes work in this game, can actually combo into back air as well on top of that. So that's also another huge way for Palutena to just, you know, win neutral and get stage control in a matchup like this, or in a lot of matchups oh! as well. Yeah, I love that, like, uh... He recognized that Gak went low and just capitalized on that because had a lot of extra time there to just position yourself and like seal it out. The back air sweet spot not gonna be enough to like do it across the stage, but now uh, Gak with a stock deficit and like, I, I didn't think that this would be one of those matchups, but it just seems like maybe it could be just like a Gak as a player matchup thing. But like the way he plays with a stock lead versus the way he plays with a stock deficit is just like 
apples and oranges. It's not comparable. Yeah, it's like interesting how you like you're you're so amazing in one way, but then like when you're facing a different matchup, it's just like a whole different ballpark for sure. And right now in town and city, it's looking pretty poised right now. This is really this is an interesting counter pick because with the blast zones, I feel like Ness's back throw if he's able to get it will like oh. definitely kill easily on a stage like this. But the drag oh. down forces him into the perfect awkward position where despite the bounce off the stage, like he's not able to get that PK Thunder one away from the stage in time, and it bounces off of it, and as a result, he's just gonna wind up dying. That was so unfortunate for Gact. Yeah, fast fall was incredible for Chag to just get that advantage in this game and to potentially go up 2-1 to continue this gauntlet that is the Japanese players in this tournament. It's like that perfect awkward percent as well when like he needs to get like some sort of like a low percent grab confirmed from Palutena like down throwing the forward air like he just got to be able to actually get one of these neutral airs because Ness is just so tiny to the point where he can dip under those neutral airs pretty easily at the lower percent but once you get one and you're able to actually land it that's when it's going to start comboing or you could just back air repeatedly like he's doing right now to be able to get him up to 55 percent that also works too he's got the options against a character like this which is probably why a lot of people say that this matchup is Palutena favored like I personally as well believe it is not that Ness can't do anything like you and I uh like you mentioned very much earlier before Especially on a stage like, uh, stage like Town and City where the Blast Zones on the side can be that much tinier and way higher on the top. So you're not going to be dying to the up throws. Both these characters I feel like can be really good on a stage like this. Yeah, I definitely agree with you there. I, I think Chag just made some monumental moves to the stocks when he needed to. So now Gak is just playing that game from behind. Uh, but I think recognizing the matchup, I think he's just controlling the pace a little bit differently. Not trying to overextend because he knows that Palutena doesn't have to get hit by a lot of these specific things. Alright, going for the forward throw right there. Knowing that there was nothing true off of down throw, and as a result, he wouldn't be able to get the uh, air dodge mix up for forward smash like Palutena has loved to do. But the back air, going to even this game out on the part of Gak between these two players. The forward tilt actually lighting the activation, but not getting any uh, much damage <gasps> off of it because of the angel platform respawn and vulnerability. Going to reflect it with the counter oh, right there, the goodness. PK fire back. I thought that was going to be a dash attack or a forward smash or something off of that. I don't think Chag was uh, completely aware of that situation once it happened. I think he just countered because he expected a hitbox to come out. But as we all know, Palutena's counter is an option select because it doubles as a reflector. And as a result, gets him off the stage. Explosive flame, going to do it off the top. 2-1 in the favor of Chag right now. One more to take out Gact and advance up to losers semi-finals. This is a set and a half right now, isn't it, Rickles? Oh, absolutely. That was kind of crazy to see in a lot of different ways. It's just like, uh, there was a huge scramble in the end in that final stock, especially with the, like, the with forward snatch. He was just kind of floating right in front of him. The fire, the reflection, and so uh, finally going up in the set. So really good stuff. Yeah, the question is, where does Gact go from here? Do we want a longer stage to be able to stay away from Palutena's crazy combos? doubt it because you know Palutena can extend combos on those stages really well get a lot of good neutral air strings forward air strings and just still space with back air well I would imagine that a smaller stage might do a little bit better like maybe hollow bastion where you could shark onto the platforms you know be able to catch Palutena's landings off from high you know by creating like you know little no fly zones because of the way the platform works it can make landings a little bit more linear for sure yeah, we're gonna ride, rock it right back to town and city. This does not surprise me. Ness can kill real early on this stage. The platform layouts can be good for him for extending combos occasionally. Yeah, this absolutely feels very doable for Gak. I think the, just like the 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 big difference makers here are the plays that Chag has been making to seal these stocks. But I, I love the patience that Chag, or sorry, the Gak is applying here in the losers bracket. Definitely, six, uh, it feels like he's a lot more patient than he was earlier in the tournament. He certainly is for sure able to get this string going on and that's the first patented Gak string that we've seen today getting those reversal PK, uh, PSI magnets I should say up to 67% only in about 20 seconds between these two players that's a hell of an explosive way to start this game number four you know Gak is going to be looking for more strings like that because he does not want to fall down out of this bracket and neither does Chag you see him holding stage control very patiently looking like a damn smash for Palutena for a second going for a single hit jab on the shield to mix up and not go for the full committal rapid jab on the shield as well and it actually winds up working out for him Rickles yeah, I, I love that. Just the getting up in your face, feeling things out to see if you're going to drop shield. If not, we don't do the multi-hit. We won't get punished and just able to get stage from it. But this is quite a good sizable lead here for Gek. But burning a jump in the process, air dodge is going to make him get to that platform position really well. And the back throw from the drag down. Gek, a monstrous lead in his game four. He wants this game five. Hold up. All right. 
Running it through again. Teleporting diagonally down and in directly towards the ledge right there. That was actually pretty cool. Yeah, looking for just something to get going here. Gonna get knocked off the stage. Only 2% delts here. Uh, Chag doing a great job of just like hanging in for a moment here. Oh no. Speaking of hanging on, that was the best option uh, Gak could have possibly done right there. Rolling in like would have caused him to pop it a little bit earlier. But Ness has got that sort of like Mewtwo-esque double jump rising factor. So he was able to just back off, put a hitbox out in front of him with that forward air to be able to actually make his way back to the stage against the Palutena up, uh, the Palutena up smash wall. You already know. You already know how it's going to go, and as a result, I mean, we got Gact holding a solid lead right here, just retreating with these forward airs. Chad conditioning him to not do that by just dash uh, dash attacking right in with the invulnerability of the shield on top of that. Ooh. You may hit me with that twice, but not a third time. It's the ledge trump back air. Going to take the stock right there on the part of Chag. Only a 76% differential. Absolutely still anybody's game right now, and the ledge trap from Ness. Oh, keeping the pressure on with the PSI magnet. That was so, so sick, oh, keeping that oh, hitbox oh. out. But his own counter pick working against him, the high blast zone, not letting that up air kill. Not landing a single moment at all. Like the way Gax has been doing, especially on the second half of that last stock, was just incredible, just wrecking up the extra damage that he needed to get. But now we are one back throw away from putting Chag on our last stock here in game four. And I love the awareness on Chag as well. Like, he has the reads every time, but unfortunately he just misspaced the back here to keep the onslaught going. Still not going to matter, though, as he's got him by the platform, but then a full hop. You didn't expect him to just run in full hop and just get that back air going for you, did you? That's why it was a really good back air. He did it in a very unexpected way, in a way that in that situation seems like the unorthodox thing to do. Ooh. I love the reflector on the way back down to just sort of negate the PSI flash and make your way safely back down to the level. That just goes to show that Chag, for sure, knows this matchup on top of this bread and butter for sure but Gax not if he has anything to say about it he's still up a whole stock Rickles yeah and this is looking a lot better than the last stock as well where he was sitting at like a 120 for a very long time he doesn't have to die anytime soon you know forcing him to forcing him to warp recovery onto the platform came in through the nick of time right now that was actually really good uh situational awareness on the part of Chad because normally he would have PSI magneted at uh he would have uh, reflected out of that, but then the platform in the center came in clutch for him to be able to do a warp cancel instead. And as a result, he didn't have to land to, uh, too in too linear of a fashion to be able to just warp cancel his way back down instead. So, really good stuff. And now we are down to the last game between these two players. Is Chad gonna lose this matchup and fall down against the Japanese gauntlet, or will he be able to defeat Gact and advance on through this bracket in Kyojin Dojo? Man, what a tournament. What a tournament, Rickles. I'm having a good time. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I'm excited. This is our first game five of the block, and there have been no blowouts so far, and this is like the best of the best, you know, the cream of the crop. Uh, after a three-day event, this is what you want to see. You're just like nail-biter sets, and here we are going into uh, Hollow Bastion. Very interesting stage. I think this is going to be solid for, again, for both characters. Uh, similar strengths and weaknesses for the most part. And uh, we touched on this before. It's just like... Uh, Chag has like suffered in this matchup before, but I, I just think there's just a lot of like high damage things that Ness can do that kind of put Palutena on notice. That's very true, you know, because once Ness is actually in, he can get some good damage on Palutena because she's got the Nair strings, she's got the Fair strings, she's got she's the neutral monster that she is because of the invulnerability of back air. But beyond a Ness even parrying those, once the Ness is actually in, his awkward small size can make it a little hard to get anything started, you know, for Palutena. She's a very fundamental based character at this stage in the meta. She's got to wait for air dodges, wait for whiffs, you know, really only whip, whip out attacks that she knows are going to hit or will be able to Ooh. apply safe pressure on at this stage in the meta. She can't just nair willy-nilly like she used to, especially against a small character like Ness, where it can be very difficult. One with as good of a punish game as Ness has as well. I can't think of a better stage and better music for us to have in this loser's quarters final game between these two players right now. I have no idea who's going to take this, but I'm real excited to find out, Rickles. I definitely agree with you there, especially in that platform situation right there. Had Chag hesitated for like a frame longer, like a second longer, that could have been uh, Gak's early stock into this game. And now that could be it right here. Yeah, untackable, even at that percent. Very surprising because there's like, there's like a little bit of window there where it could happen. And uh, now that I'm thinking about it more, like the big difference makers in these sets is just like, while Palutena can do high knockback, which is miserable for Ness, the high damage that Ness is offering right now is just devastating uh, Chag so far. Not able to get the back air out in time. Ooh. Oh, whoa! That was a forward air. Yeah, he, really. 
you got to go for those. Like, as I'm talking about, it's like not only do you have to get these high knockback setups, but you have to actually go out there and like commit to just like you put net Ness in these positions. You got to go take that extra mile. My goodness, that was crazy. I mean, I mean, yeah, sometimes you got to do an unorthodox thing to take a stock like that because your opponent will just expect it the least, my friend. It's part of resource management on top of, like, stale negation charts, you know what I'm saying? Like, you'd be like, oh, I never just ran off and did forward air, but I need this stock now, otherwise I'm not going to be able to bring this back! Really strong down smash to be able to get it up to 68%. We still got ourselves a dead even game. Both of these players, I gotta say, are playing so well throughout this whole set. <laughs> oh, hold up. We saw that earlier. I think it was from Chag. The down down air into up smash. This time, he has a lower percent opting for the down air to forward smash. But this is huge. This is actually a huge moment in time for Gag. A stock lead, only 82% on him here. Does not have to lose the stock anytime soon. Oh, he's going for frame 50 F smashes, though. Or ones that end on frame, uh, round frame 50, I should say. You know he's going for those hard reads. He might be getting a little bit nervous. What's the ledge trap here? Just going to hang back, double uh, double empty hop into the back air for sure. This is where you got to keep Ness. We just need some basic Palu fundies right here. Down throw. Just going to hold away for sure. Does not want to get caught in an F tilt or a forward smash off of an air dodge read. Or necessarily by holding Ooh. in. I love the F tilt reverse. Very sneaky movement right there. Dashing in and out to make it seem like that was a safe place to land. And then nothing doing, says Shag. But he still hasn't taken the stock yet, Rickles. Yeah, a very big hitbox right there. And he's getting the stock finally. Dead even. Game five. Last stock situation. This is what you need to see out of this. It's just like we've had a lot of game four sets. And a lot of them have not been nearly as close as this. By far, the closest match we got to commentate. Holy crap. Honestly, this is getting real nervous. Like, both of you, they're both scared. Look at the way they're... Look at the way they're... They're both scared right now. Not committing. Finally gets one from Gak right there. Getting a little quick two-piece off the PSI magnet into the up air. Forward throw. Going to keep this onslaught going right by the ledge. Air dodging right back to it. He's got to get backstage control first before he's able to do anything. Gak, knowing exactly where Chag is going to go, runs to get the jab because he knows that's the quickest and easiest hitbox he'll be able to get out. And the only one, the least committal one he needs to be able to keep the pressure on on that platform as well. You no, he doesn't want to commit to anything too hard unless he get up aired a third time. Oh, Can we get a fourth? The nerves are in full effect here for both players. We're seeing the scramble situations from both of them. And now, oh, oh, bad positioning right here. Can he do anything <laughs> off of it? Really good delay right there. But still, taking so much damage, has not been able to land. That is so pulsy. I thought he was just going to go right into the stage with the PK Thunder 2 because he saw the F-Tilt coming out. Oh. I don't think that would have hit Ness. Oh, we're, going to the, we're not even going to the ledge. Not only do we get insane knockback from forward throw and back throw, but they deal so much percent in the process. And now it's dead even. Anybody's game can it can be over right now. Oh, oh my god, the slight misspacing of the up smash of the of the yo-yo! If he was on like a pixel closer, that would have hit on either side. That roll was so ballsy on the part of oh, Chag. Oh backers. my god, that, they're just swinging back airs against each other. Uh, the back throw center stage, finish? this might do it. No, no way! Oh Next my. one will do it though. He's going to warp oh, right back to the ledge, man. mixing it up. Oh. I love the warp back to the ledge to mix it up. That one's going to do it. Well. That is Mexico's representative going down at, I do believe, fifth place. Yeah, which means five players left in the tournament, all of them from Japan. All Japan <laughs> matchups coming up on the stream. Uh, but we're not you're not done with us yet despite that one that felt like a block ender but that was it not. did <laughs> that is definitely a block ender i mean that rocked my block for sure my is goodness it, <laughs> it is insanity dude